Welcome to the Bellingcat How-To Series. This series is aimed at anyone who wants to use Bellingcat's research tools. In this video, we'll learn how to use the Bellingcat Vcontacta URL Scraper. This is a tool that allows you to scrape data, including videos and photos, from the Russian social media website Vcontacta, often shortened to VK. These videos and photos can be vital when you're doing digital research focused on Russia or on communities that use the website. Hi there, my name is Tristan Lee, data scientist at Bellingcat, and in this video, I'll explain to you how to use the VK URL scraper. First, I'll give you an example of how this tool could be useful in your research. Later, I'll give you a quick walkthrough of the interface of the tool. And lastly, I'll explain how to download and access the scraped data. At Bellingcat, we use this tool to access and archive tons of social media content from Beacon Talk to. This has been really helpful in investigations related to Russia or Ukraine. For example, in our work on the civilian harm in Ukraine time map. In this map, we verify and geolocate social media posts that show incidents in Ukraine that have resulted in potential civilian harm. I use the tool myself to archive content from far-right figures who are often very active on Vicon Takta because of its loose moderation policies. All right, let's give it a try. The notebook is on Bellingcat's GitHub in the Open Source Research Notebooks repository. You can find a link to that in this video's description. You scroll down, look for the one that says VK URL Scraper, and click the Open in Colab button. Google Colab is an accessible interface for coding tools that we've previously made a video about. You can find a link to that video in the description as well. To get started, you'll first need to fill in a valid username or phone and password for your VK account. After submitting these in the cell, they'll be used throughout the notebook. When using a Colab notebook, it's important to complete all the steps and run all the cells in order. So let's start with step one. There are three cells in step one that you'll need to run. Running the first cell, we'll install the Python package for this tool, VK URL Scraper, developed by my colleagues at Bellingcat. What the notebook is doing right now is downloading and installing all the Python packages that VK URL Scraper depends on. While we're waiting for the cell to run, something to keep in mind is that accessing vcontacta with this tool may violate their terms of service and could lead to your account getting flagged or even banned, especially if you're using this tool with a brand new VK account. That's why it's always best to use a separate research account for investigations so you don't risk messing up your personal account. So the next cell will uninstall a broken feature and install a fixed one. Don't worry too much about this. It's because our tool depends on another tool whose Python package hasn't been updated at the time of this recording. The third cell will allow you to check if the tool is successfully installed. If this is the case, you'll get a message similar to this one, which describes how to use the tool, and then you can move on to step two. So in step two, the first cell contains some helper code that's sometimes needed the first time you log in, but you don't need to worry too much about the details. Running the second cell should create a configuration file called vk underscore config dot v2 dot json. This file contains access tokens for your vk account, so be careful if you share it. Treat the file the same as you would treat your password. So we can see the file has been created. Instead of a file being created though, sometimes you might get the message that says CAPTCHA detected and it shows you a URL. In that case, go to the URL that's shown, solve the CAPTCHA and submit the result by clicking on the text box to the right of the message. After this, the configuration file should be created and you can, and you can move on. Once the config file has been created, you don't need to rerun the Python code in this section unless you want to log in to a different VK account. All right, step three is where you actually start scraping posts. As an example, we'll scrape a post with both text and images by inserting the URL in the, in the first cell like we have here. After running the cell, you should see a scraped.json file in the file list. And we see it here. Besides the post data, we can automatically download the media from a post by including the download flag. And you can also scrape multiple URLs at the same time by separating them with a comma, as we have here. So now that you've run these cells, how do you actually download the scrape information to your device? Something to keep in mind is that Google Colab refreshes the runtime and deletes local files after 12 hours. So if you want to use the data you just scraped, you'll need to download it to your computer. You can do this easily by first clicking on the files icon in the left sidebar. You might need to click the refresh button to force it to recognize new files. Second, selecting the three vertical dots to the left of the given file in the file list. And third, clicking the download button. And we see it's downloaded. 
You can download the images um, and video separately, but uh, the JSON, uh, you're able to see more information about the VK post. Things like the number of likes or photos caption. This is especially helpful for archiving research material. And that's it. Thanks for taking the time to learn about the VK URL scraper with me. If you have any questions or get stuck, we have a fantastic community in our Discord server. It's super active and super helpful. Bellingcat has developed a lot of open source research tools. You can find all of them on our GitHub. You can find links to our Discord server and our GitHub page in the description of this video. If you're interested in using more Bellingcat tools, watch our other videos in this series. We're going to be making more of these in the future. Comment below what tool you'd like to see us cover next. I really hope this guide has been helpful and it's given you ideas on how to use open source research tools like this in your own investigations.